Welcome back here to Mighty Mac on YouTube. The Las Vegas 4 Y Nationals is officially in the books. It is an absolute historic weekend for the NHRA in terms of the competition that we saw today as well as throughout the weekend. I know a lot of people are still skeptical and hold out against the 4 wide events because of the fact they still think it's all gimmick racing or they just don't like it. All I can say is... 14 years on from the first one back at Charlotte in 2010, this race has earned its spot on the NHRA calendar, especially with the racing we've seen in the past couple of years, especially with the racing we saw today. The Funny Car Final has already been regarded as one of the best drag races we've seen in recent memory, and it lives up to the hype that's built around it off of what we saw. We'll get into that later. But if the trends continue like we saw last year with how well the Charlotte 4 wide was compared to the Vegas 4 wide, I can't imagine how well it's going to be in a couple weeks' time when we get there for the Charlotte 4 wide Nationals to wrap up the 4 wide portion of the calendar. We have that to go through as well as the highlights and the recaps of the brackets and all that and more. Let's get into the video. But before we do, like I've been saying for the past couple of weeks, if you like the content that we've been doing, then by all means be sure to subscribe to the channel today because we're going to ramp up the coverage as we get ready for the month of May with the Indianapolis. GP, the 108th running game of the Indianapolis 500, and of course the Chicago Route 66 NHRA Nationals in Joliet, Illinois. So if you like what we're doing, you like the interviews, you like the coverage, and you like the recaps that we give, be sure to subscribe today so that way you don't miss out on anything. Be sure to hit the notification bell and do all that fun stuff so you don't miss out on anything that we do as you get ready for one of the biggest months in all of motorsports. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So once again, the route, the four wide nationals has wrapped up and like I said at the beginning, this race has lived up to the billing that it has been given itself. Not only the fact that we're in Las Vegas, not only the fact that it's the four wide, just the competition that we've seen this year so far and the way it just keeps getting better. I filled out my drag racing bracket bonanza last night. I hope you guys did as well. It was a bit confusing, but of course with the four wide, it's always going to be a bit confusing because things have to change in order for it to work. But... Man, oh man, did that make everything exciting. So again, like I've been saying for a while, if you're not signed up for that as well, be sure to do that. That's actually an unsponsored thing. Hopefully that changes soon. Um, but still, just an absolutely incredible event top to bottom. Just unpredictability everywhere you look. Just chaos in every single pairing. Uh, I believe an upset in just about every single round. A lot of unexpected faces. So let's look straight into the notes from today. Starting off with our winner, Jeg Coughlin Jr. He looked really good back at Arizona. He keeps building off that momentum. He came in here and cleaned house on everything except the number one qualifier's hat, which was to, went to Jerry Don Tucker, but he finished second in qualifying. He won the Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge, and he has won his 85th career event at Las Vegas, winning the 4Y Nationals in a very big win. Huge weekend for him. I still am saying that early on in the season, you got to watch out for Jeg Coughlin because he is looking very strong. He could easily be a big threat to Erica Enders for that Pro Stock World Championship. Look at the rest of the notes. Other guys as well. A career weekend for Jerry Tucker. Ran it all the way to the final round. Came close to winning his first ever national event win. Finished runner-up to Jeg Coughlin. Defeating Erica Enders as well in that pairing. Looking at his bracket. He had to go through Chris McGahey and Troy Coughlin. Then went through Eric Latino and Dallas Glenn, and then in the final round, defeating Brandon Foster, Eric, he falling short to <laughs> defeating Brandon Foster and Eric Enders, but falling short to Jag Coughlin Jr. So a really good week for him. Another crew weekend as well for Brandon Foster was unexpected really for me. I did not have him making it to the final round, let alone the round two. So it was a very good weekend for him. Round one, defeating Christian Quadra, Fernando Quadra Jr., falling short to Eric Latino. In the semifinals, taking out Eric Latino and Dallas Glenn, but finishing second to Jag Coughlin Jr. Then in the final round, in his first ever final round appearance, Red Lights jumps it by almost a day and a half, gives up the win. He loses it there, but an incredible turnout for Pro Stock. Greg Anderson as well, finding his footing. He fell short in the semifinal rounds, but man, that car is looking stronger and stronger as the weekend goes on. Last year, we had to wait all the way up until the U.S. Nationals to really see that car turn a, turn a corner and become, again, that big threat to the championship that we've seen year after year after year. He won it back at Arizona and he is looking even stronger right now. That car is building momentum and it is getting quicker as time goes on. But man, what an incredible pairing there. Just looking quickly through the rest as well. 
Uh, Eric Anders, number six qualifier, ran through all the way to the final round but fell short. David Quadra defeating Kenny Delco and Derek Kramer to make his semifinal round appearance. So looking ahead to Charlotte for the Mission Foods Too Fast, Too Tasty Challenge. Who you see in the semifinals is who's going to be matching up there. Dallas Glenn, Jerry Tucker, Eric Latino, and Brandon Forrest will be the first pair. And the second pair will be Jag Coughlin Jr., David Quadra, Erica Enders, and Greg Anderson. I said this in a group chat with a bunch of other content creators. It's feeling like the bit of 2009, 2010 all over again because I mean that second pairing Jack Coffin Jr. versus Eric Anders versus Greg Anderson you might as well stop a full throttle sticker on their fire suits because it just feels like that all over again moving on into the next group of funny car to see how that went down a big win over there for Bob Task the third this is a huge statement win for that team going into the season had a lot of hype build up after how well they did last year running up to third in the points breaking his way into that big part. So many people had counted them out. Did not have the best start to 2024, but man, is he looking stronger than ever. Came into this weekend, they put a limiter on that car on ET and mile an hour to put a restrictor so that way they could just make it on the track and get what they needed. They weren't looking to exactly go for world record passes or just trying to get it down the racetrack and keep it in one piece. But by the time Q4 came around, they took it off. By the time the final round came off, they took it way off and just let that car rip. It wanted to run and it wanted to eat and boy, did it ever. Round one, facing off against Steve Dench and Paulie and Chad Green. The wins that round as well as Chad Green moves on to face off against Austin Proc, Alexis DeJoria as well. Austin, Alexis DeJoria and Chad Green fall short. Bob Task in the third and makes it to the final round to face off against Austin Proc, Matt Hagen, and Ron Caps. The big four and funny car met together, a Titan matchup was literally the four championship teams from last year and they meet up in the final round in the fourth race of the season all four manufacturers being represented of chevrolet dodge toyota and ford and the ford mustang funny car puts it in the winner circle on a historic triple hole shot victory bob task the third captures his first one of the season this early on in the season this is a huge statement win for that team as he delivers a knockout blow in las vegas he was at ufc 300 last night was the sun it really helped out now because man oh man is this a very big statement win other notes i have for him. jeff deal in his round one loss ran a 399 the happiest person to ever lose a race in probably nhra history because of the fact they finally got their first ever three second run they were beaming smiles across the faces jason rupert a massive upset defeating john force and cruz pedragon two former funny car world champions one of which being the goat a big win for them as well but of course all eyes are going to be on that funny car final is being regarded as one of the best funny car races we've seen in recent memory and if this is anything to look at with the four guys that are in that final round including jr todd who lost in the semifinals you're going to be looking at one epic version of a funny car world championship without robert hyde in there but austin Prague getting in that car looking just as strong as robert hyde did last year with the return of jr todd and Coletta motorsports back up there you now have literally all the manufacturers you have toyota in there as well not just as ron caps but jr todd but you got austin Prague. you got john force making a return to the funny car stage on the top stage matt hagan looking just strong as he ever did and of course the lone representative for the ford camp besides daniel Wilkinson, bob task the third an incredible victory for them as they just try to put themselves back up into the top step of the funny car rank and win their first world championship the first for Ford since 2014 then of course top fuel Doug Coletta came into the season having won the world championship the thing that was missing on his trophy counter for so long the only thing else he was missing was a four wide national event win he takes that win here today and claims a spot back on top of the mountain of the top fuel rankings round one defeats his teammate Sean Langdon it was only three cars because 15 cars showed up so there was a buy run in there Steve Torrance and Doug Collette move on to round number two round number two against Brittany Force and Josh Hart again Steve Torrance Doug Collette advance to the final round and right there we saw Doug Collette a statement win the third win for Coletta Motorsports this season actually no I believe that's their fourth it's a third in top field but their fourth because you got to remember J.R. Todd won back at the Gator Nationals as well when they doubled up so Alan Reinhardt's wrong on that but it is their third top field win of the season looking at other notes through there as well for top fuel Tony Stewart goes back-to-back first round wins they start out the season 
0 for 2 in first round losses back at Gainesville and Pomona, then Arizona and the Vegas 4 wide nationals. They're now 2 and 2. That team is really turning a corner and they're getting that car down the track consistently and they're getting down that track quickly because they're starting to make some noise. Looking at his bracket, round 1, Clay Milk and Krista Baldwin and Antron Brown, the winner of the two fast, two tasty challenge on Saturday, takes care of business with Clay Milliken. They advance to round number 2 against Terry Totten, who deserves a shout out as well in his round 1 matchup against Sean Reed, Justin Ashley, and Tony Schumacher. It is not the guy you would have thought who would won. Tony Schumacher and Sean Reed fall short in round number one, advancing with Justin Ashley, but sets up a really interesting pairing. Clay Milliken as well. Started this, this weekend trying to build momentum after the disappointing start that they had back at Gainesville as well as Pomona where they blew a supercharger. Came into this weekend in qualifying, struggling to make it on the racetrack on all eight cylinders. They got that corner turn and that car ended up qualifying in the third position. And again, that car made it down the track both times without destroying anything. So this is a really good weekend for them. That team as well, starting to build momentum towards their championship hopes. They say they're going to win this year. I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And a so they make it to round number two. Justin Ashley, Terry Totten, Clay Milliken, and Tony Stewart. Justin Ashley and Tony Stewart make it to the final, which leads to your Titan uh, <laughs> top fuel championship matchup. Doug Coletta, Steve Torrance, Justin Ashley, and Tony Stewart. I believe, actually, yeah, three Toyotas and a Dodge in the finals. So big win for Toyota as well because of the fact they have all three cars there. But, of course, Doug Coletta captures his win and is back on top of the top field standings. But another big shout-out for, well, Coletta Motorsports really turning up the wick this season. This has been a very strong statement. Because think about this. They've won all but one of the top field races. That is insane. The only person to have not won it was Justin Ashley, who won the Pomona Finals. So not only is this a big weekend for Coletta, having now won all but one of the top fuel wins, all the top fuel wins have been Toyota. So that's another massive win for them. Toyota is cleaning house right now, and they're looking, once again, as the manufacturer to be, especially with the involvement that they've had in HRA the last few years and the continued involvement that they've been having. Looking as well back with Funny Car, like I said, all of them are there, but again, Toyota is looking very, very strong at the start of the season, and they're just going to keep continuing to build momentum, because Alexis DeJoya, as well as semifinals, so Toyota really, really picking up this year and bringing the fight to Chevy, Chevy, Ford, and Dodge. They're right now are going to be the manufacturer to be. We have highlights to go through. Let's look at those, and then wrap it up here and look forward to now what should be a an insane Charlotte for Y Nationals. Foster goes red by a mile. And this one is going to go down to the stripe, and Foster looks at, rather, Tucker looks like he's going to shot at it, and at the finish line stripe, it is Coughlin. 661, 607.18 miles an hour for Jag. Gets the job done. So Jay Coughlin Jr. brings home the Wally at the four wide nationals. Jag, you were the first to leave the starting line. You had the quickest car in that quad. You've got yourself a horse to ride, and that's going to be dangerous to the pro stock contingent. How good does it feel to hold that Wally for the first time in a couple years? It feels fantastic, let me tell you. It, uh, it's been uh, quite a ride without question. Uh, you know, being in the winter circle, uh, nothing beats that. Uh, the team elites, uh, obviously, uh, brought me back in with open arms with uh, Randy and everyone at Skag and JHG and uh, Jegs and, of course, Outlaw Beer, man. We're going to enjoy a few of those tonight, let me tell you. But uh, this thing was a rocket all weekend. I let the clutch out there in the final. You know, uh, the whole crew chief bank had this thing on kill. And front end was up. I was banging through the gears. And I'm like, God, please hold together because everything felt really good uh, from the time I let the clutch out until I saw that blinking light. And, uh, you know, I love my family. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Amanda's with Jake's teammate, Eric Enders. What a final round. They charge to the finish line strike. And the wind light is on for Bob Tasca. 391.5 on a hole shot. Be heats a triple hole shot for the first time <laughs> in funny car history. 391 beat a 389, beat a 390, and beat a 3904. In one of the best drag races we've seen in recent memory, 9,000 of a second triple hole shot win for Bob Tasca. Did you take off the speed limit and the ET limit on those guys? I took the rev limiter off Aaron Brooks and Todd Okahara. All weekend long, this race car has been wanting to run. We just wanted to find that consistency to go up and down the racetrack. This last run, we knew we had to step up. I knew I had to step up. You're racing against the best in the world over here. That's a big time matchup. Cavs, Hagen, Proc, Tasca. We got the trophy, baby! 
partying in Vegas tonight. Yes! Yes, yes! They're all clean off the watch. They're all clean down the racetrack and across the finish line stripe it is Doug Coletta. 371.5 beats a 374.5, a 374.5, and a 376.9. When Doug Coletta has himself a good race car, the rest of the competition better watch out. That was the case this weekend, Doug. 371, that was a close final round, three thousandths of a second. How much fun are you having driving this car right now? Yeah, I tell you, Alan Johnson and, uh, you know, Mac and all these Mac Tools, Toyota, uh, Revline guys, they uh, really got this thing running. You know, each round we were running, you know, quick time. And, uh, yeah, just uh, it's great to do in Vegas. And, uh, obviously, the first four wide, uh, it's pretty special. Congratulations, Doug. Thanks a lot. And that's going to wrap it up here for your Vegas 4 wide Nationals. Again, if the momentum that we have saw last year keeps up, the Charlotte 4 wide Nationals I still think is one of the best national events that we saw last year. And if this is anything to go off of, I think it's going to be better. Remember, last time we were at Charlotte, we saw our first ever 300 run to the 8th mile. So again, if that is an historic thing to look up to, I think Charlotte is going to live up to the expectations and then some because the Z-Max Jaguar sure knows how to put on a show every time Monday trade visits that place. So again... If you're looking forward to that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow me on all my social media pages down below. MightyMac03 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I've been posting all weekend, as well as updates and winter graphics as well. So if you like that, be sure to follow me there. Be sure to subscribe to the channel here so you never miss a video. Like I said, we're looking forward to an historic month of May for the Annapolis 500 and, of course, the, Sh the Chicago Route 66 Nationals. So, again, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Be, leave your opinions down below on what you thought of this week and what you thought of the season so far. Who you think are going to be your top picks for the championship. Be sure to let me know down below. But of course, like I said, subscribe, like, comment, and share with all your friends so everybody can get introduced to the world of drag racing. Because again, this is just going to keep getting better as the year goes on. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until a couple weeks time when we are back for the Charlotte 4 Nationals, this has been Mighty Mac, and I will see you next time.